Well, joining me today is Tori Bruno. He is the president and CEO of United Launch Alliance, which is the joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Tori, thanks for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. So let's talk a little bit about the new family of rockets that are under development at ULA, the Vulcan rockets. This really sort of represents a big shift, a big transformation in terms of type of launch vehicles that you're developing and, and the economics around it. Yes, yeah, so Vulcan is very exciting. So it replaces an entire family of launch vehicles with one that is much more capable, much more flexible, and a lot more affordable. In terms of reusability, uh, because that first stage is going to be reusable, why develop that technology now? Why hasn't it existed before? Well, what's changed now is the volume of lift that people anticipate in the marketplace. Because when you make a rocket reusable, or any portion of it re reusable, there's additional costs. You add to that rocket, you have refurbishment costs, so you need a certain amount of volume to make that economically attractive, and that's what the industry is anticipating will happen. And what is your timeline for Vulcan making its maiden flight? We're going to fly Vulcan in the middle of 2020. We're so excited about that. We'll begin introducing reusability elements just a couple, two, three years later, and then whole new technologies in an advanced upper stage. And, and sort of looking at this new family of rockets and then the introduction of reusability, what is that going to do to launch prices for ULA and how will that compare to the current rockets that you send up on missions? Sure. So the reusability we'll bring into the first stage will make the overall cost of launch less and make space more accessible. The reusability that we will introduce into the upper stage will be a revolution in how we go to space and what we can do there. And so, a couple months ago, we saw the main in flight of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. Uh, given the success of that, have you felt any pressure to cut launch costs ahead of that? We're really responding to the marketplace, so I'd have to say no. I mean, what was exciting about that was the new technologies that were displayed, but we all have our different approaches. And the cool thing about an open and competitive marketplace is you have the opportunity for different people to try different things. That's how you get innovation. And we're certainly seeing some different people enter this space uh, mm -hmm. over the next couple of years. You mentioned SpaceX. You've also got Blue Origin developing their orbital rocket. You've got some small... Uh, rocket launchers as well that have come onto the scene. Uh, when you look at the changing landscape, is there room for everybody? I think that space is a really big place, but is there room for everybody? Well, of course not. Every market has a certain amount of supply that will match that demand. Right now, there's a lot of people excited. There's new players. I expect many of these will find a place in space, but over time, the market always makes choices about who fits and who doesn't. How does that speak to the competition that's afoot right now for the launch service agreements, for the new sort of next generation rockets that the Air Force is looking to have developed? Sure. In LSA, we see the government taking advantage of all this excitement in space and people becoming new entrants in order to be able to survey all of that and pick the best, eventually, two providers to satisfy national security space missions. And you think ULA will be one of those two providers? Absolutely. And certainly you've been the go-to, or you know, at least until the last couple of years, the only go-to uh, for military missions. Uh, do you have a plan, especially with this new family of rockets that will come out in the next couple of years, to start courting some of the commercial customers out there as well? Yes, we absolutely do. The first 10 or so years of our existence were really focused on avoiding a national security space crisis where assets were aging out, replacements were late, that was our business. But today, that crisis is now averted, and we've already begun marketing even our venerable Mighty Atlas rocket commercially, and expect to have sales very soon. As we roll forward into Vulcan, you'll see that footprint expand. I want to talk about the rocket engines. Okay. Um, because you are shifting away from the Russian-made rocket engines that are your current uh, launch vehicles and the push is to get an American-made engine. Two players in that process, Blue Origin and Aerojet Rocketdyne. You can make a decision soon? I am going to make a decision soon. I feel like you've been saying the word soon for a long time. How soon? <laughs> Very soon. <laughs> Are you still leaning towards Blue Origin right now? Soon. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, I guess on that note, we'll be keeping an eye for that announcement and certainly look forward to 
seeing Vulcan as it uh, as it continues to be developed and the next couple of years make its maiden flight. Thank you for joining us, Tori Bruno. Tori Bruno, the president and CEO of United Launch Alliance. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.